Hey everybody, Chris with Random Weekend Adventures here. Exciting day, got some new resin to test. Uh, this actually comes from my friends at iFun, uh, who if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen I've, I've tested their uh, resins in the past. My favorite being their clear resin, which hands down has to be probably uh, the best clear resin uh, that there is out there. At least it's the best that I've personally used. And uh, I can't imagine based on the results that I had that really anybody's gonna beat the clarity of that resin. So gonna go ahead and we'll just dive right into this bad boy and see how she does. All right, so I went ahead and started with the gray resin since that's gonna show up a lot better on cameras, make it easier for you guys to actually see the details and see what I'm seeing. Uh, I expect the white resin they sent me to work just as well as the gray did but maybe have to lower the exposure maybe a tenth of a second. So that's just fairly typical when it comes to lighter resins or uh, even transparent resins. So I went ahead and started with the RERF file, which I will have linked in the description below. Biggest part with this, if you are running it on the Mono X, is that the numbers listed in the actual description of the th thing are not correct. So I will go ahead and post the proper exposure times for each number down in the description of this video. But I, if you're ever looking for it, when you go to download the file, go to the comments in Thingiverse and it'll show them there. So that way you can easily find uh, what the proper exposure times are. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on my macro lens so that way we can take a closer look at these and that way you can see what I'm seeing and we can talk a little bit about um, how it printed, how I was able to dial it in, and then we can actually look at a couple miniatures that I printed using these settings. All right, got the macro lens on here. So I'm just gonna show you guys underexposed. So this is number seven, and that would actually be the first section of lights that shuts off. I wanna say it's like point eight seconds, it may be even less than that, I'll have to look. Um, but you can see that this uh, print clearly failed. Um, I'm missing quite a few parts of it. And then if we go ahead and we look at the back, which is what I mainly focus on, uh, we can see there is no gap between uh, the separations within the measurements. Uh, there's just all kinds of issues here. So this is obviously dramatically underexposed. So these are really easy. We'll go ahead and just boo, toss that guy out of here. Now we'll go to the last one that shuts off. So the highest exposure and that is the number one. So if you look at number one, uh, we can see a couple different things. So the cross in here is very thick, a lot thicker than it's supposed to be. Again, you wouldn't know, but that's the nice part about having eight of these is you can compare them side by side and identify which ones, you know, you can kind of throw to the side and which ones you need to compare a little bit more closely. And we look at the gaps here, which you, can, you can't really see it, but there's actually measurements that tell us by the, the tenth of a, I think it's a tenth of a millimeter to kind of help us identify, um, you know, where our exposures are. So if it's overexposed, it'll kind of fill these in. You won't have them full. If it's underexposed, then you're not, you're going to see like what we had in the first one there. So that's what you're seeing here. So we know that this one's obviously overexposed. And just in the process of elimination, um, knowing that those were way off, I'm going to go ahead and pull out number two and number eight, and I'm going to leave with four, five, uh, three, four, five, and six. So let's go ahead and just compare two separate sides of the spectrum, three and six. Now, like I said, don't mind the dog here. Perks of having white dogs. Three and six. So these are opposite ends of the four that I have remaining. And there's a couple different things that you can identify here. Um, just looking at the back. So we look at the gaps here in the middle. And we can see which one had a little bit too much exposure. And which one maybe didn't have quite enough exposure. And something that's interesting too is with the the more the less exposure you do 
see a little bit more of the layer lines in there as well, which honestly is to be expected uh, because you are not creating, you're not going too far with it. You're not overexposing. But that's just a quick rundown of exactly what I did, you know, to help identify what my settings needed to be. Looking at the top here, you can see the, the pillars. Those are all of various sizes that get smaller and larger. If you can get that very last row, not the ones that are bent over, but you can just barely see down in there. If you can get those to print out, you're really, really close. Um, if you can find the one that doesn't print that very last row right here, if you, if you can find that one that doesn't and then the next one does, you know you're right where you need to be. But there's a lot of details that you can pick out here. You, realistically, it just depends on you know, your own opinion of this, but you're talking about a one second difference between this one and this one. So you definitely don't want to underexpose. I would much rather overexpose and then work my way down versus underexposing, having the chance of there being something that doesn't cure properly, breaks off, sticks to my FEP, I don't realize it, poke a hole in my FEP when the build plate lowers later on. So again, really big issue. So let me go ahead and take the macro lens off and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Now, I wanna compliment iPhone on this, even though, to be honest, it's kind of a pain, but it's a good problem to have. You have a lot of options here, right? We have more than a second of difference between these prints, and that is fantastic. You didn't have any failures. All your, the difference in details is so minute um, that it makes it really difficult to really pick where you want to set your initial exposure. Um, so that's great. Sometimes one tenth of a second with certain resins is all it takes to go from a print looking great to a complete failure and a bunch of cleanup, a bunch of wasted time, and a bunch of wasted resin. Um, so props to iPhone for having a product that makes it difficult <laughs> to identify exactly where I need to have it. And you know, as I said before, I would much rather have it a little bit overexposed than underexposed so that I don't have those failures and I can work my way down from there. Uh, but this is a phenomenal problem to have. So what I did is I actually stuck in the middle and went with 2.4 seconds for my initial exposure. Now, one thing I wanna keep in mind for those of you who have seen my screen protector video, I run two screen protectors. I also run 75% UV. I've done a ton of testing and about every 10% you go down in UV, you need to go about a one tenth of a second and for every screen protector that you add in, you have to add in one tenth per second. So if you're running a printer without a screen protector or in my case two, your exposure times are going to be different. So use my tests as a guideline and make sure that you run the RERF your yourself. It takes less than 50 minutes and it will save your bacon more than likely. So I got really lucky and had an order come in through Etsy. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity uh, to showcase what I think a lot of you are using this resin for and that's printing custom miniatures from uh, Hero Forge or Eldrick Foundry or something of that nature. Um, so I really wanted to kind of show what those look like. Now this is at the 2.4 second per layer and it turned out great. I went ahead and cleaned these up uh, in 91% isopropyl alcohol, let them dry off uh, completely, and then I go ahead and take a mug, fill it with the hottest water that I can get out of my tap, and then I will pop these bad boys into that mug and let them sit for just a few minutes, and that helps the supports to release. It helps immensely the supports to release and leave back and leave very, very little uh, residual supports behind, as well as v minimizes the divots that you're getting in. I use some pretty 
pretty shallow supports. Uh, my light supports right now are set for this resin to a 0.1 uh, contact diameter and a 0.15 contact depth. So those are pretty pretty small. But I also, for these guys, I just did auto supports in Chitu Box and did 80% because I, I did not want these to fail. From there, I'll start to dial back and I'm pretty sure uh, based on how easy these supports came off, um, I'm probably thinking I'll probably settle around that 70%, maybe 65, somewhere in that range. And then I may end up having to add a few supports here or there. But this resin uh, definitely impressed me as far as how easy it was to remove the supports, but you could definitely tell how good of a hold they had on there. I didn't have a single failed one, even in a couple areas in which I had expected there to be maybe a support uh, that didn't stick, such as these large overhangs here on a cape um, or even arms. You know, those of you who print these know that the arms that stick out like this, especially at a 90, can sometimes cause problems. Um, and you'll get those flat dead spots or completely just miss an arm. So I am incredibly impressed with this resin and how it performed. Uh, these are the first prints I did. I have not done another print, and I may dial it back maybe a tenth of a second, maybe two tenths of a second. Um, I, the camera, I know it adds a little bit more gloss to this than it truly has, so I don't think you can see the sharpness of the detail, but it looks fantastic for a 32 millimeter scale miniature. So I'll go ahead and put on the macro line so we can take a close, closer look at these, and I think that'll pretty much do it. All right, with the macro lens, hopefully we can take a little bit closer look. Kind of see how, how these guys turned out. Get a better idea of the overall quality. Now, the feel of this resin, it definitely is, is soft. Now, I have not run these through the curing station yet, and I will do that. Um, but overall, I do like that it does have a little bit of soft feel to it but it isn't gunky. I don't feel residual resin on my hands or anything like that, which I've had with uh, especially certain water washable resins, even when I wash them in IPA. So that's one thing I, I really appreciate about this is that I can feel that it is soft, which makes me a lot less stressed when I'm removing supports because I feel like I at least have a little bit of a give um, when I'm pulling them off and I'm not just gonna snap a piece off of it. Obviously, I have a little bit of cleaning up to do with the tweezers. Uh, I have not done anything to these other than what you guys saw there. I just pull off the supports and set them aside to let them dry uh, from being in that warm water. But I'm going to go ahead and I think it'll be easier if I show you guys with a coat of primer. So I use Krylon uh, dark gray flat primer on any of my prints that people order primed. Uh, this is a situation with that. So I'm going to take a second. Go ahead and coat these. I'm going to clean up any existing supports that I can, get rid of any kind of bumps that I need to, and then I'm going to put a coat of primer on these guys, and then I'll come back to you so that you can kind of see, hopefully a little bit better, uh, the depth of this detail. And keep in mind, this is a, um, this is a Hero Forge or an Eldrick Foundry model. So uh, those of you who have printed these know that they're not super duper detailed. This is as good as it's going to get. I don't get prints really better than this from their models. They're not crazy high detail like what I get from Signum um, or Zendoria or uh, Labyrinth, which are the three that I typically work with. You know, this, this looks really good. So great job, iPhone. I'll be right back with you guys with a cleaned up, primed, and finished model. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today and seeing my, my review and uh, looking to the rigid resin from iFun. 
uh, thank you iPhone for sending this to me. Um, I appreciate everything that you guys do for me um, and allowing me to actually give an honest review. In terms of this resin, uh, it does exactly what I needed to do as far as printing miniatures, which is probably 99% of my business. It checks all the boxes. Great details, phenomenal supports, consistent printing. Um, it's, it's all great. The only downfall, which this isn't gonna be for everyone, uh, is that it does have a strong scent. So if you're very, very sensitive uh, to the smell of some of the stronger resins and what they can give off, uh, this one is definitely up there, but I'm very fortunate that I'm not sensitive to it at all, and the office in which this is in uh, is very, I have it ventilated. I also have a carbon filter running 24 seven in here. Um, and this is all this room is really used for now is just printing. If I need to use it for something else, I'll stop my printers. I'll do what I need to do and then start my printers back up just because I don't want to really be breathing this stuff in. So, but overall, um, I don't think that should be a deal breaker for something that works this well. So again, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, look forward to the December Signum release. I will be using this resin exclusively for that. So if you guys want to get a better look at some high detailed prints, uh, that's going to be where you're going to get nothing better from me on that one. So look forward to that. And until next time, you guys take care. Go have yourself a random weekend adventure, even if it's 3D printing. Take her easy.